This is eight easy Stream Deck tips that you guys can use to impress your viewers during your live streams and during your content. I'm gonna go over every single one of them. I'm talking about being able to switch between scenes, being able to go with a wide shot like this in your room, in your home studio, a secondary shot. I'm talking about being able to zoom in and out on the screen. I'm gonna show you that here in just a second. The tools you can use in your stream deck for that. I'm gonna show you how to hook up a phone or a secondary camera like I'm doing right now and how to use that and implement and enhance the production quality of your live streams with your stream deck, which is really, really fun. I'm also gonna show you uh, how you can play things like, you know, sound effects and what have you on a stream deck and how to program that, how to do music playback, how to do all of these interesting things and more, how to play an intro outro sequence, uh, which is amazing, and how to do your variety, increase your variety in terms of what you're showing your audience on the screen with full screen shots like this and Lastly, I'm gonna show you guys how I put arrows on the screen and uh, do on-screen graphics where I'm drawing and stuff all over the place and the tool I'm using for that with my stream deck. All of that right now. I hope you guys are ready because I'm going over very tactical items. It took a lot of preparation to get all this ready to show you right now. So let's just go straight into showing you the first thing, which is how to zoom in and out. The cool trick that I use uh, from time to time, how to zoom in and out. Uh, so basically, I've got my Stream Deck software here, uh, but what you can do is you can zoom in and out on your computer using a software called Zoomit. So I am not paid by Zoomit to say this, so this is the software right here, it's called Zoomit. I will drop a link in chat for you guys right now. Uh, this is a free software that you can install for Windows, it's called Zoomit, and here's what it does. Let me just show you this software in action. So as you can see on my Stream Deck right over here, I've got a Zoom hotkey programmed into my Stream Deck. And so what that does is when I hit that hotkey, it actually zooms in on my screen. I can zoom in and out anywhere I want on my screen at any time. This is a free piece of software. Uh, is this only supported? Uh, Leonard uh, Ogreed says in chat on Stream Deck, no, it's supported anywhere that any hotkey exists. But what I'm trying to show you guys today is some easy stuff that you can do with your Stream Deck to improve your production quality. And so what you do with the Zoomit software is you basically uh, open it up. I'm gonna show you how this software looks here in just a moment, if I can get it uh, to work for you. There we go. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is pull up the Zoomit software for you. And here it is. And this is the Zoomit software right here. And what the Zoomit software does is it allows you to select your level of zoom that you're gonna zoom in so you can do times two, you can do times three, you name it. You can increase your magnification as you see fit, which is really cool. And so if you wanted to do extreme zooming, you could do times three zooming. And then you program a hotkey that is the same hotkey as you have on Zoom It for zooming, which in my case is control one. And you bring that hotkey over in your stream deck, you drag and drop hotkey over, and then you program the hotkey in your stream deck like I just did. I'm gonna delete it. And so I programmed this hotkey here with control one. So now whenever I hit the zoom hotkey, it zooms in times three. Imagine if you're showing something on the internet, if you're showing something in gameplay, you can just at on the press of a key on your stream deck, zoom in and just zoom on anywhere you want on your screen and go into great detail. And if you have a times, uh, if you have a 4K monitor, and 4K capture, you can retain a really high level of quality whenever you do this zooming using the zoom it, zoom it feature. I wanted to show this to you because I think it's awesome to add a lot of variety, especially for people that do tutorials or wanna show like detailed items on the screen. Really, really cool stuff right there. I, I love that. So zoom it is the free piece of software. I have a lot more cool tips I wanna show you guys. That was just the first free one link in the description below on the YouTube and Facebook version and I just posted it in chat as well. But wait, there's more. So the next fun thing I wanna show you guys is, as you guys know, increasing retention in your content is really, really important. And so if you wanna increase retention, having just one main camera shot that you do or having like a secondary shot where you're in the corner here, those are the two standard shots that everybody does, right? when it comes to creating content. You should add more variety of shots whenever you're creating an OBS, Streamlabs OBS, and XSplit. And you should be switching between your shots as often as possible. I have measurable data on my analytics and with my clients that shows that the more often you switch the shot, the better. 
And so what I recommend is adding a secondary shot, a behind shot behind you, like the one I'm doing right here. I have a Logitech Brio right behind me and it does a secondary behind shot or side shot where you can just add visual variety while you're presenting to your audience. And so doing a wide scene requires you to have a camera uh, that has a relatively wide angle lens. The one I have right here, the Logitech Brio is a 90 degree angle lens, uh, which is great. So I'm gonna link the Brio to you guys. And I'm also gonna link the Aver Media PW513 I have a 90 degree angle and also it's in the description, a 90 degree angle and a 94 degree angle resp uh, respectively. And so what I do in the Stream Deck software, excuse me, is I program a button on my Stream Deck called Room or Secondary Shot, as you guys can see right here. And that button right there, when I program that on my Stream Deck, it allows me to quickly switch between all these different shots so that I can add a lot of visual variety. Imagine if this show was just me on camera in just one shot, just talking to you with the same angle the entire time. It would be far less engaging. So adding that secondary shot or adding that behind the scenes shot that shows the studio adds a ton of quality. And I think the only viable way to do that and to switch to it on a regular basis, the one best way really is to get a stream deck and program that button in. And so what I've done here in my stream deck software, as you can see here, is in any, you can, whether you're using Streamlabs OBS or whether you're using regular OBS, you can program this in by dragging a scene over into your Stream Deck and obviously just creating a scene with that secondary camera and then setting that button up so when you press it, it goes to that scene. And I, that for me, that is the room button that you see right here. And so now anytime I want, I can do a secondary shot or I can do real talk or I can increase variety in my studio. And that's a button you guys should be pressing on your Stream Deck. It's so easy to add, and it adds so much more production quality. But guys, there are so many other tricks that I want to show you, including things like Voice Changer and all sorts of other stuff that you can use for a variety in your streams, how to put arrows on the screen, you name it. I'm gonna play this ad really quick to pay the bills, and I'll be right back with even more awesome Stream Deck tricks to add variety in your live streams. This video is sponsored by Restream. Why live stream to one platform when you can simultaneously live stream to every platform to discover new audiences faster using Restream.io? But wait, there's more. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? Game to Change UK, great to see you. Awesome to see all of you guys here. Uh, so let's talk about the next thing that you guys should absolutely be considering uh, as an easy trick for your Stream Deck. And it's actually a free software that you can do a an upgrade to, and it's what's allowing me to do this. It's called Voice Mod, and it can change your voice to any number of custom voices. Let me show you the website. I'm not paid by them to say this. This is not a sponsorship. But Voice Mod is a voice changing software. I'm going to show you how you can integrate it with the Stream Deck, where you can sound like anything you can imagine. This is a cyberpunk themed voice that I'm using right now through Voice Mod, and this can add a lot of variety and increase retention during your live streams to use this sort of thing. I'm gonna turn it off for a minute so I can talk normal, but I'm not using a uh, voice, I'm using a voice changer with my Rodecaster Pro, that is correct. So the question in chat there from Real Mystery is, yes, I am uh, using this voice changer software with my Rodecaster Pro, and I'm gonna show you guys how I have that set up uh, right now, okay? So let me go over to my second monitor and talk about the voice changing software and why it's important to have a stream deck uh, to do it. By the way, if you guys don't already have a Stream Deck, I've got links in the description uh, to the Stream Deck if you guys want to pick it up. There's a mini Stream Deck, there is a regular Stream Deck, and there is an XL Stream Deck. And the one that I have my voice changer stuff programmed to is my XL Stream Deck. So check this out. I'm going to switch over. You can have multiple Stream Decks plugged up at the same time. And this is my Stream Deck XL, which uh, I have right over here. I actually, to do this show, I have a Stream Deck XL, which has all of my voice changer buttons and sound effects buttons, as you can see. And then I have one that does all of my scenes and does all of my uh, 
kind of uh, show changes and scenes and recording and streaming on the other stream deck, okay? So let's talk about the voice changer feature and how I'm doing that and how I'm programming that. So the, the program is called Voice Mod. You can download it for free today. And this is it, this is the interface. This is not sponsored by them. This is just me liking the voice changer software. And they've got all these voices on here and they have free voices that rotate on here that you can use for free at any given time. And what you can do is you can select any of these voices in Voice Changer, uh, the software, and you can program them into your Stream Deck. So how do you do that? So integrated into the Stream Deck, and I'll turn my camera off for a moment, uh, over here on the side, you'll see that uh, Voice Mod is a built-in option inside the Stream Deck. Like they have a partnership with them or there's a direct integration. See Voice Mod right over here on the side? So what we can do is we can add a voice changer by dragging and dropping it here into um, into the uh, pane. So what we can do is we can do voice change. You can choose any number of voice changers. You can turn it on and off. You can even do random voice as an option. So I'm just going to show you an example of me bringing over random voice. <laughs> uh, see the dice that's right there? I'm going to turn my camera back on. And then what I can do is I've programmed a button here on my stream deck that activates Voice Changer right here. Now, as you can hear, I'm, I'm now in Voice Changer mode, and I'm gonna hit Random Voice. And so, you guys probably now hear me doing a random voice. I have no idea what voice you hear right now. Uh, you can do it so you can monitor it or not, and it'll do a random voice for you. And you can also, also of course... Program all of your favorite voices into Voice Changer. Now, as you can hear, I'm, I'm now in Voice Changer mode, and I'm gonna hit and you can program them each here and it has a custom icon when you bring it over to your stream deck for each individual voice that you're programming into your stream deck and then of course you can turn it off at any given time which is really really nice a bonus feature on the voice changing software is it actually has a button where you can bleep yourself out <laughs> so if you ever want to be brand safe but you still want to say curse words it's actually got a bleepy button right here as you can see and so let me just show you uh me using that in real time uh, so if I wanted to, you know, faux curse or whatever, I'd be like, you mother I'm going to take, take your And it has that feature built in where you can bleep yourself out using the voice changer software. So that is, uh, that is how that works. Uh, pretty cool, right? So voice changer software, that's only three out of the eight cool features that I want to show you guys today. Uh, Squad Trek says he wants me to turn, uh, it's a free voice changer. Yes, Faded Universe, it's a free voice changer, but... It, um, it only has like a rotating set of voices that you can get for free. If you want to unlock all of them, it's like 20 bucks or something like that with voice mod. So you can get some of them for free, but some of them are paid. Uh, Squad Trek is asking for voice changer back for a minute. So I'm happy to do that for just a minute for Squad Trek. Okay, so another thing that you guys need to consider is licensing an official intro outro song or whatever for your brand. Uh, so I'm keeping the voice just for a minute an official intro outro song for your brand and then triggering that song So everybody can recognize that song whenever your show happens And so the stream deck allows you to do that uh, Using a soundboard feature Gonna turn off the voice to go ahead and show this for to you. So what do I mean by that? So uh, for I'm gonna turn off my background music and I'm gonna trigger my theme song so you guys can see what I'm talking about here this is another built-in feature in the Stream Deck that's really, really cool. So I'm going to select my Stream Deck XL. And what you can see down here is that I've got two, uh, for my two podcasts, AWOL Digital Podcast as well as um, Digital Drop Podcast, I've got official intro-outro theme songs that I've licensed for those shows that I play over and over again. I have the commercial rights to them. So right now, I'm going to press the button uh, for the AWOL Digital Podcast, for example, uh, and I'm going to show that to you. Um, so I'm just going to push it right here on the stream deck. And as you can see, it has this cool little uh, readout that shows you that the song is playing and that how much time is left on the song while it's playing, which is really, really cool, right? And so how do you program that in? That is a built-in feature inside of Stream Deck uh, that comes for free, if you will, with the software. Uh, and it's called Soundboard. So the soundboard feature is right over here. See, it's right above my head. So what you do is you do a play audio soundboard feature. You drag play audio onto your stream deck and you literally go on your computer and you browse for the audio file on your computer and you plug in the audio file. 
I'm going to delete that version, but you guys get it. You browse for the file and then you can choose what happens in the settings here whenever you hit the button. So you can have it play and stop when you hit the button. So for example, if I hit it right now, the music stops. And then if I hit it again, it'll play. And you can also have it to where it fades in, fades out, doesn't fade, etc. And here's the cool part. You can choose where the actual sound plays to. So you can choose which device it goes to. So you can play it to people on Discord. You can play it to your live stream. You can play it only to yourself. You can choose where it goes. I highly recommend licensing a theme song for your show, for your, for your stream, for what you're doing. Um, so that you can kind of have like an audio identity to your brand and not just a video identity to your brand. But guys, that's only four out of the five fun tricks that you can do to impress your audience. Are you guys enjoying this? It looks like you guys are enjoying this here in chat. Awesome. Um, is there any way to change your voice without changing, without affecting the music that's playing, affecting the music? Yeah, so whenever you do voice changing, it's completely separate from the music. Uh, so to answer your question about voice mod, um, so that, that would have no impact on that. Those are two totally separate things to my knowledge, if that's what you're asking. The music would be coming in as its own input. And then if I decide to do voice changer like this, or if I decide to be Stephen Hawking, that would have no impact on the music. And there's built in music that comes with voice mod. Uh, and you can turn those background effects off if you don't want those background effects when you're using the voice changer, okay? Cool, I hope that answered your question. Um, awesome. So, let's continue. Uh, so, the next cool feature that I want you guys to know about uh, when it comes to Stream Deck to impress your viewers, and is of course, this one's really easy. This one also uses voice mod. This program, they don't pay me to talk about it. I just wanna be clear about that. It also uses voice mod and it's called sound effects and soundboard, right? So there's the built-in soundboard that I showed you a moment ago on Stream Deck, where you can just plug in sounds, but you can also use, if you want, uh, the voice mod soundboard. So there's two different ways to do that. So I like using the voice mod soundboard, and what you do is you hit the plus button in voice mod. I like running it all through voice mod. You choose whatever sound effect that you wanna download and implement. So for example, I've got everything here from, you know, air horn to, um, you know, to lightning strikes to applause sound effects, all of that programmed in. And what you do is you add all of those as a library of sounds in your soundboard, which is really cool. Then you can program those sound effects to go into your stream deck. And so what you do, this is all a part of the voice mod uh, soundboard uh, integration. I'm gonna dis disappear back here and you can go down to soundboard and you can add any of these sound effects that you see fit uh, to your stream using soundboard. You drag those soundboard effects over here like this, and then you literally just select a sound and it pulls up all of the sounds from a big menu of sounds that, that you've uploaded into, into voice mod. It's my favorite way to add sound effects uh, to a live stream. And so with sound effects, you're probably going to want a lot of them. And so my recommendation if you're gonna do sound effects is to get a Stream Deck XL and to do a lot of sound effects because people don't wanna hear the same sound effect over and over and over again. And so that's why I have a total of like 16 sound effects that I use uh, during my live streams because if you play the same one over and over again, people will get tired of it and they will just think that you're just playing with your soundboard just to play with it, makes sense? So that's another feature of voice mod that is yet another fun way to impress your viewers and just to add variety to your streams. And you guys have seen me do this on my podcast. One thing I'd warn you about though is do not overuse the sound effects uh, feature on your stream deck uh, when you're using it because people just get super uh, annoyed. Like only play a sound effect once every few minutes, right? Because if you do it too often, uh, people will get super, super tired of hearing the sound effects and they'll tell you to stop uh, or they'll just tune out. But wait, there's more. <laughs> All right, I have three more cool tips I wanna show you guys. Really quick though, I have free group coaching that I'm doing uh, this, uh, this Thursday. And if you guys wanna come to my free group coaching, here's how you do it. I just, here. Here's how you do it. I'm gonna post the link in chat right now. I'm doing free coaching with no marketing catch of any description on March 25th. 
and March 1st. I do this every Thursday. It is literally free. There is no marketing catch of any description whatsoever here. You just sign up for free video coaching. I've already got 29 creators in there right now, and I will help you succeed as an online content creator. I provide this. I'm gonna turn the voice changer off. I provide this as a free service. I normally charge $150 per hour for my coaching. This is a free service. People are hurting, they lost their jobs. People are hurting from COVID. Some people cannot afford my $150 per hour fee. So I coach people for zero effing dollars with no catch at all. This is not a sales session. There's no marketing. I'm not collecting your email. I'm literally just helping you for free. Sign up right now, link in the description, and I put it in chat if you want me to help you with your strategy and discuss the latest in social media technology and what have you. Cool, free resource for you guys. Uh, I love doing these sessions. A few of you guys from those sessions are here in chat. Feel free to speak up and uh, validate whether you think it was valuable or not to attend those sessions with me. Great, only a few tickets left on those sessions, so feel free to grab those up before they sell out. They're free, right? Great. The next trick for the stream deck that I wanna talk about is triggering video playback. And so a lot of big streams when they start up to get people's attention um, is to play some sort of cool intro video or a start streaming soon video or what have you. And I do not recommend st uh, streaming soon videos. I do, however, recommend that you guys create a branded video to reinforce your brand that you can play either after you do a verbal intro or at the very end of your streams. And you guys will see me doing this on a regular basis in my content. And I tend to have video playback be toward the end of my broadcasts. How do I do this? So what I'm doing is I'm using the video playback function here in, uh, in uh, or I'm, I'm rather, I've programmed a scene in my Streamlabs or in my OBS, and you guys can choose how you guys do this, but let me just show you how this works. So basically I've got a scene here in my OBS called outro right over here, and it has a video file in it, which is my branded outro. And I want you guys to be able to play your branded intro or outro at a good time when you can retain viewers and be able to trigger that at the press of a button so you guys don't have to edit your video later. Uh, because a lot of you guys are wasting time in editing when you don't actually need to be editing your content. So what you can do is you can just take a scene uh, from Streamlabs OBS or any other program, and you can drag and drop it here on your stream deck, and you program that scene to play a video, and in my case, it's outro. And so at the end of all of my content, instead of editing my content, this is a way to impress your viewers and to save time, instead of editing my content, you can put an advertisement in there, that's how I played the restream ad earlier. You could put your branded outro in there. That's how I did my branded outro earlier. And you can actually edit your videos. Listen to this. You can edit your videos in real time without having to actually edit them. I'm gonna play my outro right now. This stream, the stream's not over, but I'm just gonna do this as an example. Ready? I'm hitting the outro button and this is what happens. Right? So instead of me having to record this session, drop it into an editor, and then slap that outro on there, slap the advertisement in there, maybe put any other video playback in there, I do it in real time using my stream deck to save time so I don't have to edit this later. Make sense? That's yet another trick on how to increase your production quality. Another fast one that I want you guys to know about, many of you guys are using uh, a view when you're broadcasting that looks like this view, okay? You're on the side, right? You're on a green screen or you're, a little, you're in a little box on the side here. And maybe you have gameplay next to you, maybe you have your PowerPoint, you have whatever you're presenting right there, okay? And while you're doing that, you're small in the corner. I want you to keep thinking about how can you increase your visual variety with how you present yourself on the internet. And so what I showed you earlier, one of the other tips was having that room shot to add visual variety. As you can see, I'm still in the corner and I have the secondary camera there adding visual variety. But a lot of you guys don't take advantage of just having a full screen shot with no gameplay on the screen, no supplementary content on the screen, and you just go full screen with yourself just so you can talk directly to your audience. This is a scene, this is just a bonus power tip. This is just a scene that you guys should be programming into your uh, stream deck 
This is my camera and camera interface I use if you guys are interested in knowing for that full screen camera shot. Every single streamer should be having this shot and talking directly to their audience because as we talked about on Digital Drop Podcast today, even on Twitch, just as an example, just chatting is the biggest category of content on Twitch now. And so the more time you can spend talking to your audience and switching between a shot like this and a shot like this and a shot like this, the more visual variety you're going to have to retain your viewers. You need to constantly be switching it up because the production value stakes keep going up, 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 up. Make sense? I hope that make, made sense, all right? So that is another one, adding a full screen camera scene. And so as you guys can see right here, I, my full screen camera scene is called my G7, which is my Panasonic G7. And so whenever I hit that button on my regular stream deck right here, that is gonna take me to that full screen scene. And so using different configurations, uh, so as you can see, it's programmed right here on the stream deck right here. And it programming different configurations of how you switch between your scenes. And even if you just have one camera, doing different scenes where you're in one corner versus the other corner versus in the middle versus green screen or no green screen, just adding some variety there can make a huge difference. A scene where you're on camera and then there's chat next to you, you want to mix it up because you need to retain viewers, especially on platforms that have an algorithm. Make sense? But wait, there's more. <laughs> you guys knew there would be more. I always do this. I've got two more freaking awesome scene, two two freaking awesome um, uh, tips for you guys here. Uh, so really quick, obviously I need to thank my sponsor uh, for this episode. So I'm gonna do so using the cyberpunk voice. So I want to thank very much. Thank uh, stream. I want to thank uh, my friends over at Restream for sponsoring this episode and for being a dedicated sponsor for this show. Uh, Restream does a fantastic job of helping you get out to multiple platforms at the same time. And I, I'm just I'm very proud to have them as a sponsor. They help my clients grow and they have, have helped my clients grow for a long time. And I very highly recommend that you guys stream with Restream. So if you guys are interested, there's a link in the description below uh, to my Restream affiliate link. I'll go ahead and put it in chat for you guys right here. Restream slash join slash AWOL. Let's go ahead and grab that link and I'll put it right in here for you guys to check out. And that is how you guys can join Restream and stream to multiple platforms at the same time and grow much faster using Restream. Cool. Thank you to Restream for supporting the show. Beautiful. So I've got a couple more tips for you guys that you'll be interested in. Uh, number, the next tip is using your phone as a way to uh as a way to add variety to the production on your show so what do i mean by that so there's a ton of apps out there that uh you know claim to be able to connect your phone to your computer properly and they just don't work very well in my opinion and in my experience they don't work very well like epoch cam and these various other ones let me know what your experience of them is like but i like hard wiring my phone and programming that into my stream deck to where I can use my phone camera, which phone cameras are extremely high quality, to show various things in my space, to show things uh, closer up, to get an alternate shot. Hi guys, an alternate shot to show off my computer, whatever it may be on my Amazon streams, whatever it may be. Using your phone and programming your phone into your stream deck is, a, is something I very, very highly recommend. And so it's not that expensive to do, You've already got a high quality external camera that you can use to do a cool extra shot. So why not take advantage of that and program that phone scene into your stream deck in the process? So there's a couple adapters that you may need. I've got an idea list I'm gonna put here on Amazon. Um, as you guys can see, I, I did a lot of prep for this stream. I've got so many resources to share with you. But uh, here, I'm gonna type it in the chat. It's called phone dash, check that link out. And so basically what that link is gonna take you to is this, this right here. And these are different adapters that you can use uh, to connect your phone, either Android or iOS, to a capture card to do a wired phone shot to add variety to your live streams, okay? This, once again, you're just trying to retain viewers, you're trying to mix it up. And it would be extremely difficult to do a phone-related 
uh, scene if you didn't have it programmed into your stream deck. And so that's how I'm doing these shots like this. I've got it programmed right here into my stream deck under this scene right here called phone. And I've just have a capture card. This phone is connected to a capture card. This one, see the phone right here? This, this phone you guys see right here is connected to a capture card. And I've just plugged it in as yet another scene in my stream deck. It's just an easy way to impress your viewers. It's an easy way to take hardware that you already have and make something more of your space. Like, even if you're just talking about what's on the screen, like just holding your phone up to it and being like, look at that. Guys, look at that right there. It's like, it's just different, right? You can go like read chat and like point, like what are you talking about in chat and talk to people in chat and show their chat on the screen and just have people get closer to you in your space. Adding a secondary camera that's mobile and that you can use to look around and point in your space and do various things while you're live streaming can add a lot of variety and can increase retention. We're looking to increase retention, retention, retention in the process of doing all of this, right? Makes sense? That's yet another easy trick I'm showing you guys that you can program into your stream deck. Awesome. But wait, there's more. So <laughs> I have yet another trick, something that people ask me all the time. Do you need a capture card to connect the phone to a scene? I personally do recommend having a capture card. Yes, I personally recommend it. The YouTube version of this and the Facebook version of this have all the junk that you would need to capture it. Yep, yeah, I, I personally recommend a capture card to get your phone into your computer. I do not recommend using the software solutions. In my experience, the software solutions crash they aren't as high quality, they, and they also lag. But a wired connection, for me, is way, way more reliable. And capture cards now are so inexpensive. And the cables that you can use to program your capture card or to, to hook up your phone to your capture card are also so inexpensive that it's now within reach to do a wired connection uh, to have a phone uh, as a secondary shot in your studio, okay? Uh, and, and once you do your phone, you'll wanna get a program like Open Camera, which you can see on my phone that doesn't have a UI. And Open Camera uh, basically makes it so that there's no like grid on the screen or camera button or anything like that. So I can move my camera around without having a bunch of junk in the way on the screen as I do this. Cool, makes sense? Question from Real Mystery in chat says, so like a Gelgato Cam Link, uh, a cam link or a capture card will both work, both. Both of those are technically a capture card. Just a cam link just has a different name. Anything, it, it just you just need something that can accept an HDMI output out of your phone, out of the display port or Thunderbolt port or USB-C port or whatever your phone happens to be. Make sense? Awesome, but wait, there's more. Okay. So you got, I draw arrows on the screen all the frickin' time during my broadcast. You guys see me drawing arrows everywhere and writing on the screen, and I get this question 10 billion times, how do you draw arrows on the screen? Well, I tell you what, yet another company here that doesn't pay me any money to talk about it. It's called Epic Pen. Epic Pen. And let me grab the link. I'm going to drop it into chat right now. This is how I draw arrows on the screen. Dropping it in the chat right now. Epic Pen is the program. Let me just show it to you in action here. And I'm gonna switch over to a voice changer because it's that kind of episode today. So we're gonna do, uh, let's see, I'm gonna be an evil demon while I'm talking about Epic Pen. I'm just demoing all the Stream Deck stuff. Awesome, so I'm an evil demon that's teaching you about Epic Pen. Perfect, so Epic Pen is this little tool. Once you install it, it's right here. There's a free version and a paid version. The free version, you can use arrows. And the reason why you can use it for your stream deck is you click the mouse button here and you can just click stuff normally like a normal mouse. But if you click arrow, you can draw arrows like this. You can draw lines if you want. There's also text, highlighter, you name it. You has all sorts of features of how you can type, draw and type on your screen. It is a free tool with paid upgrades. All right. But here is how this integrates with a stream deck. What you're going to do is you want to program a button on your stream deck that switches between um i need to use the voice changer moving forward all right i will use the voice changer moving forward you got it you want to program a button on your stream deck that uh toggles between you using the arrow right here and then you using your mouse got it 
So this program, Epic Pen, allows me to do that. So as you can see, when you scroll over it, uh, and I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see it, I'm going to use two features at the same time. See right up there? Okay, it didn't work, actually. But you have, it has a hotkey that comes along with it for your cursor and a hotkey that comes along with it for your arrow. So now what you do is you program a button called a hotkey switch. This is an advanced stream deck trip tip. Pay attention, suckas. You drag hotkey switch over and it allows you to toggle between two hotkeys with the press of a button. That's the way it looks right there, okay? And so what you do is you put in this button, hotkey number one is me using the, the arrow function. Hotkey number two is me switching back to cursor. So, as you can see, I press the button, now I'm drawing arrows. I press the button, now I'm using my mouse. I press the button, now I'm drawing arrows. I press the button, now I'm using my mouse. Got it? But wait a second, I've got all these freaking arrows on the screen. I'm gonna turn off the voice changer now. Wait a second, I've got all these arrows on the screen. How do I get rid of the arrows? Well, you can program yet another hotkey button by dragging over hotkey over here on the side, dragging over hotkey and programming in a hotkey button. And that hotkey button can be the clear function right over here, the garbage can. And so that's control shift set shift seven, okay? And so then I have a button on here that will clear the arrows. So get it? So what I do is I hotkey, I draw arrows, then I hit the clear button on my stream deck and voila, they all go away. Pretty freaking awesome, right? The tool is called Epic Pen and you can use your stream deck to program how you draw arrows on the screen, use the marker on the screen, use the pen on the screen, you name it, it does all of those things. Pretty sick, right? Awesome. Guys, that was eight amazing tips on how to use your stream deck to impress your audience. Let's review. Zooming in and zooming out, doing a wide angle scene like this, using voice changers like this voice changer during your, during your sessions, doing sound effects playback and music playback on your deck. So programming in any sounds you want to add variety there, doing an intro, outro, video, what have you, like the one when I hit this button. Using a phone to add variety to your shots in your space by using a connector cable and running through a capture card with your phone and drawing arrows on the screen with Epic Pen. Guys, I guarantee it. I guarantee that I said something in this particular live stream that you did not know before. And if that's true, then share this stream and share my channels with one creator that needs help, that needs to get that retention up and needs help growing. I'm just trying to help you guys grow. I'm just giving this information away for free, basically. And I just want you guys to share this content and to share these tips with your friends. Do it. This is knowledge for everybody. These are not trade secrets that I'm keeping to myself. This knowledge is for you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next podcast. Adios, amigos. Have fun playing with your stream decks.